When a young man inherited his grandparents' farmhouse, his only option was to sell it. But when he tore up the decades-old carpet, what he found underneath was unbelievable. Determined to rid the room of the unpleasant odor, John bent down and got to work on removing the carpet. When he finally managed to pull the carpet away and was about to toss it aside, he came across something unexpected. Beneath the dirty carpet, there was no bare floor as there should have been. Instead, he uncovered a small, unsuspecting slab of concrete, and within its center was a round cap with some sort of identification number on it. That's really not what John expected to find when he started cleaning the old house. Old homes are full of many things. Mementos, memories, forgotten items and treasures of a family's history through time. That's pretty much what John had expected to find when he started cleaning the old family farmhouse in Tennessee, preparing to sell the generational property. The whole journey had been an emotional one. John had been very close with his grandparents. They were one of the most important parts of his childhood, and many of his earliest memories revolved around his nana and pop-pop. But his family's world turned upside down when his grandfather was diagnosed with lung cancer in 1998 and passed away soon after. John's father then inherited the home and eventually passed it on to John himself. But since his father's death in 2009, John had been working to close out the estate and traveled to the farmhouse himself to prepare it for sale. Despite the weight of the grief, he soon found himself standing inside the farmhouse for the first time in a long time. It was clear that it had been a very, very long time since anybody had even dared to set foot near it, at least until now. Considering it was an old house, there was a lot of work to do and he'd have to get his hands dirty if there was any chance at redeeming it. After a quick examination of both the interior and exterior of the home, John came to the sure conclusion that even if he could renovate it, repairs wouldn't be as simple as knocking down a few walls. In fact, the damage that had accumulated over the years meant that he would have to reinforce the structure from the ground up. It was a beautiful piece of land, but unfortunately, there was really no other option for John than to put it up for auction, which is exactly what he planned on doing as he continued to clean up the home in the coming days. One evening, he stumbled upon an old closet tucked away underneath the staircase. The door creaked as he cautiously swung it open, revealing nothing more than a small, neglected section of carpet that seemed to have absorbed the disgusting scent of decades gone by. That's how John found himself on all fours yanking the carpet out. If he could at least remove that foul smell, he would have made progress for the day. As he finally wrestled it free and was ready to chuck it away, he stumbled upon a small, innocent-looking enough piece of concrete with a round cap in the middle and some kind of ID number on it. When he pulled off the cap, he froze in astonishment. Below was an aged and rusted metal hatch. A rush of curiosity overcame John. Why was there a hidden hatch in his grandparents' farmhouse? What secrets could it possibly hold? Hesitating for a moment, he suddenly realized that, that this unexpected discovery might change everything he knew about his family. He wasn't even sure he wanted to open it, but after thinking about it for a few moments, he decided it would be better left to him than a stranger. Upon further inspection, he realized there was some kind of combination lock installed in the floor. It looked very much like a safe. He retrieved the only set of tools he had brought and set about trying to open it, but it appeared firmly shut after years of neglect. So then it would take a while. John figured he might get some useful information about it from his family, so he called his mom to share the news, trying to figure out how to get it open without damaging what may be inside. His mom was as dumbfounded as he was, but she took the assignment to heart and suggested important birthdays, anniversaries, and even social security numbers to use for the combination. Was he hoping to unearth priceless antiques? Or maybe his grandparents concealed the safe's contents because they were very valuable to them, on a personal level. To find out for sure, he had to empty the safe and start looking inside. John ran back to the closet and followed his mother's instructions. 
The birth date of his father failed to open the safe, and so did his grandfather's social security number. When the third attempt came around and he went to turn the handle, John was in for a serious surprise. He could no longer get the lock to even move. He tried to force it, but it was completely unyielding. The lock was rusted shut, and none of the combinations his mother had given him worked. In any case, he had to start from scratch. As suddenly, an idea sprung into his brain. He would need expert assistance to crack this ancient safe. He decided it was time to ask for help, and he got another person involved, a senior locksmith by the name of Tim. Tim was brought out to the property to inspect the safe the following day. Roughly 30 minutes into the job, he looked at John and told him that had he known what he was getting into, he would have referred the job to someone else. It was going to be a complete pain to open the safe up, if not entirely impossible. Tim would have to work for possibly many, many hours in the cramped space with no end in sight, and who was to say if anything would even be inside? It was entirely possible that John could be spending all of this time and money trying to find something that may not even be there. He asked John whether he was sure he wanted to take on this possibly meaningless task. Desperate to discover what his grandparents could be hiding, John couldn't back down now, and he told the locksmith to do everything in his power to open the hatch, no matter the cost. With a sigh, Tim hunkered down and got down to business. But the sealed concrete and metal proved harder to crack than they had initially thought. It was going to be a long day. At long last, the locksmith located the key component necessary to unlock the safe and triumphantly got it open. The hatch finally yielded to their efforts, revealing a small opening just large enough to glimpse inside. Eager to discover the long-held family secrets, John peered into the tiny space. His grandparents were avid collectors, so he knew the hidden compartment would be filled with interesting things. But he couldn't believe what was actually there. As the narrow opening exposed its contents, John's anticipation gave way to confusion and disappointment. There was no gleaming treasure or mysterious artifacts. Instead, he saw nothing more than a stack of old bricks. Or maybe they were small containers. He didn't know for sure, but he wasn't about to rule out any options either. After all, he'd only just cracked into the safe. John's expectations of unearthing hidden gold continued to dwindle as he began to remove the small boxes from the safe and discovered that almost all of them had been destroyed due to water damage. He carefully pulled out each item, but the antiquities and relics he'd hoped to unearth just weren't there. One item he found still in one piece was an old 1937 coin book, its cover nearly destroyed. All of the coins within it, however, were in pristine condition. This gave him some hope that the other things may still have a chance, so he continued his search. He began to pull out what he thought was just remnants of paper, but upon closer examination, he realized it was cash. Hundreds, if not thousands, of collectible notes that had been hidden inside. Much like the coin book, the cash had been left in water to degrade for too long. Much of it had turned to mush, and there was no chance of putting it back together. The good news, though, was that there was still enough to celebrate, when John realized that the boxes or containers were not that at all. As if discovering a hidden cache of money wasn't lucky enough, what John once thought were just boxes or containers turned out to be filled with thousands of dollars in coins. Nearly one-third of the safe had been filled with his grandmother's collection, which had somehow remained in mint condition due to the way they'd been stored. As John went further inside the safe, he discovered more dollar bills. Although it was still moist and stuck together, the damage to them wasn't as severe as the first ones he discovered. He thought he may be able to save a few with the aid of a few specialists. The further he delved, the more magnificent the wealth seemed to be. He managed to uncover four silver bars dated back to the 1700s. He didn't understand their meaning at first, but given their historical date, he figured that the bars were rare. It wasn't gold, but John was satisfied. The issue was he never would have anticipated that the last thing he'd remove from the safe 
an unsuspecting, rusted toolbox would leave him completely emotional. At this point, he was certainly experienced when it came to prying things open, so he kept at it, until eventually the box was opened. What was in that old box will astound you. His grandmother's jewelry, some of which was quite valuable, had been stored alongside an old photo of her he had never seen before. The items weren't very valuable or historically noteworthy, but they were quite meaningful to John, who hadn't even had the strength to say his grandmother's name in months. If he had found nothing else inside the safe but these heirlooms, John would have been happy. His troubles would have been worth it. He remembered his grandmother wearing many of these jewels, and it made the image of his grandmother particularly vivid in his mind. He couldn't help but let a few tears out. But even as he did so, a thought kept popping into his head. This was clearly his grandma's hidden collection of antiquities, because she'd always been an avid collector of coins and jewelry, nothing more. Which left him with one question. What about his grandfather and his belongings? Where could they possibly be, if anywhere at all? John knew deep down that the home had more secrets to hide, but he was still determined to sell the home and continued to carry out some repairs. He enlisted his brother-in-law, Mark, to help with moving some of the furniture. In the meantime, he went to the popular social media site Reddit to seek advice on the monetary worth of the coins he discovered. He wanted to know why they had meant so much to his grandmother so much so that she'd buried it in cement and had not breathed a word of it to her son and grandson. When his brother-in-law arrived a few days later, they got to work and made their way to the basement, where most of the old furniture had been left. There was a leather couch and a deteriorating coffee table with a few drawers. John searched each item thoroughly because he had nothing left to lose, but each drawer and cushion came up empty. The two men moved to lift the coffee table from its place in the basement. Suddenly, with an unexpected force, the top of the coffee table detached from its base and fell to the ground. John and Mark stared in astonishment as the table's top lay on the floor, revealing a hidden compartment. Within it was yet another standalone safe that appeared sturdy and untouched by time. John found himself smiling. His grandparents must have had the time of their lives in this farmhouse. They gave in to their whims like mischievous children and set about burying artifacts, jewelry, and silver bars. He was thankful that the remnants of their happiness were still around. Intrigued by the newfound discovery, John and his brother-in-law examined the safe. It was locked and the keys were nowhere to be found. It was pretty heavy, but the two men were able to load it into a truck. Could this be his grandfather's hidden stash? Mark brought the safe to his workplace. It was in better condition than the previous one, so he was able to use a few power tools to cut it open. John awaited the news, and when the call finally came, he rushed to Mark's workplace to witness the opening of what was believed to be the last hidden treasure inside his family's Tennessee home. The safe yielded to the power tools, and as the door swung open, John's eyes widened at the sight before him. It did appear, in fact, to be an assortment of his grandfather's antiques. Inside of it were several collectible pistols that had been kept in perfect condition. This included a collection of 22s, which were some of the first guns ever created back in 1887. There were also about 300 single $1 bills, a generous sum but nothing close in worth to the coin collection his nana had left behind. John's gaze then fell upon an old journal tucked into the corner of the safe. Intrigued, he carefully retrieved it. As he delicately turned the pages, John realized that the journal held a first-hand account of his grandfather's experiences, both in the military and during his travels around the world. It helped him remember something about his grandfather that he'd forgotten a long time ago. It was funny that, as a boy, in that very house his grandma read to him Treasure Island, and he'd always dreamt of finding something like this. John knew deep down that he no longer had the heart to sell the farmhouse. The more he explored, the more he remembered about his childhood there, about the love and happiness his grandparents shared, and the more he didn't want to let it go. John continued to explore his grandfather's memories. Among the antiques, he uncovered a collection of vintage pocket knives and a container filled with wartime medals and ribbons earned during his grandfather's military service. 
Antique pocket watches and more vintage coins were also scattered within. John later found out that the $301 bills were bar notes. In other words, the bills were signed by a secretary of the treasury that died only 29 days into office. This made it valuable to collectors. What he thought was only $300 could now easily be worth $3,000. As for the vintage coins, users on Reddit informed John that coins dating before 1964, of which there were many in his grandma's collection, were worth 20 times more than their face value, if not more. The silver bars, on the other hand, could be worth close to $800 each, totaling around $3,200. There could be tens of thousands sitting in the farmhouse, and it was all thanks to the playful antics and inherited treasures from his beloved late grandparents. After a few weeks spent perusing the internet and making calls to find out the value of what he had discovered, John decided to revisit the farmhouse one more time. As he walked through the familiar rooms, he couldn't help but feel a sense of belonging. The creaking floorboards and the scent of old wood brought back the comfort of his childhood. In a quiet corner of the attic, tucked away in one last forgotten box, John stumbled upon a weathered old compass. The compass, worn by time and weathered by journeys long past, was a poignant reminder of his grandfather's seafaring adventures. Its needle, though slightly unsteady, still pointed true north, just like the spirit of the man who once owned it. Holding the compass in his hands, John felt a surge of appreciation for his pop-pop. With a newfound sense of purpose, John decided to keep it as a cherished memento, a link to the man who had inspired his own dreams. As John left the farmhouse that day, he carried not only the artifacts of his grandparents, but also a revived appreciation for the bonds that tied his family together. The discoveries within the farmhouse had become a museum of memories that, without John's intervention, would have gone unknown forever. It allowed him to reconnect with his roots and rediscover the values that shaped his family legacy. In the days that followed, John documented each item from the safe, consulting with experts to ensure their proper preservation. This included the antiques, pistols, journal, and wartime memorabilia. John was planning on holding on to them for a long time to keep within his family. His loved ones were overjoyed to hear what he'd managed to save. Word of the remarkable discovery spread throughout the local community, drawing historians, collectors, and enthusiasts who wanted to witness the treasures. The farmhouse, once neglected, now stood to the resilience of family, memories, and untold stories. As John shared the narrative of his grandparents' journey through the artifacts, he found pride in honoring his family legacy. The farmhouse, instead of being sold at auction, became a cherished space where he could connect with the past and his grandparents once more. In the coming years, he will continue to renovate it little by little whenever he can. Even to this day, he's still finding little things that his pop-pop and nana left behind almost as if they left it only for him to discover. When asked what his future plans for the residence were, John said he doesn't plan on selling the property or renting it out, because it would be disrespectful to his grandparents' memories. He mentioned that it was the one place that everyone came to celebrate holidays, birthdays, or visit before his grandfather's cancer diagnosis. One day, John hopes to have it restored and ready for those family gatherings again. In the end, the farmhouse served not only as a place of discovery, but also as a reminder that some treasures are priceless, transcending monetary value to become a part of something far greater. The story of a family, their struggles, triumphs, and the enduring bonds that can withstand the test of time, and maybe even a little water damage too. If you inherited an old family house, what would you hope to find in there? Share it with us in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more mesmerizing tales of discovery and adventure. Until next time, may your own journey be filled with treasure.